It's story time. Can I tell you a story? If you've been around a while, you will know that now is time to get really comfortable. And if you're new here, now is time to get really comfortable. And while you're getting really comfortable, I will tell you that this podcast and these stories are supported by patrons. So if these stories feed you and you would like to offer something back and become a patron too, you can do that on patreon.com forward slash can I tell you a story. P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash can I tell you a story where you will receive bonus stories. There are many bonus stories waiting for you already and other things that you can find out more on the site starting from $7 a month. And now, speaking of stories, it's time for one. It takes Jasmine years to remember how to be alone again. It's like taking off coats, she thinks. How did I get to be wearing so many of them? A lifetime of coats. Sensible, dark woolen coats. Heirloom fur coats. Bulky padded winter coats. Spring coats thrown over shoulders just in case of rain. Coats made of should, coats made of ought to, coats made of duty and obligation and responsibility. Heavy, cumbersome coats. She piles them up on the bed in the spare room until they overflow onto the floor, filling the room until it's hard to close the door, but she manages, shoving coats through the gap between the closing door and the doorway so the door can latch with a soft click that sounds like the feeling of freedom. She remembers this feeling of lightness from before, when, home from school and grocery shopping, her children took flight like starlings, swooping and spinning and oblivious, as they abandoned the car, doors left wide open, leaving her staggering up the path with groceries and school bags dragging at her body. She remembers savouring the moment, when the bags hit the kitchen floor, feeling like she could float up through the ceiling and through the roof, float up into the atmosphere above the house. She never got further than that, cries for snacks and entertainment and lost toys and love catching at her ankles and pulling her firmly to the ground. But now her swooping starlings have long since grown and left the nest she built for them, and there's no one to tug at her ankles, no one to pull her back to earth and help her slide her arms into the sleeves of another coat. Now Jasmine pushes one more coat into the bulging spare room and feels as if her head could almost brush the ceiling. It's early evening when she feels it, an insistent silvery tug, like someone has tied a string to her skeleton and is pulling at it gently. Jasmine pushes the feeling away and turns to take care of the next task. There isn't one. She's still not used to this absence of the burdens of love. There are no meals to prepare, no baths to run, no children to remind about homework or getting an early night. She has only herself to please. The silvery tug at her bones is electric. She looks around her living room, worn at the edges from so much living happening within those walls. Out the window, the sunshine sky is dissolving into softer hues and the air feels full of promise. Why not? Jasmine takes her time preparing. She takes her house phone off the hook, takes a moment to smile back at the photographs of her grinning starlings, some of them now with children of their own, their faces echoes of each other. She turns the lamp on, soft glow falling over her waiting armchair, over the dark red rug. She steps out into the deepening twilight and closes her front door behind her. She doesn't take a coat. The silvery tug leads her down her street to the sea and all the way to the end of the pier where there's a glow at the edge of the world. The horizon brightens and the moon begins to rise, bringing with it a silver gold pathway stretching right to her feet. Jasmine watches the shifting light rippling over the water and she remembers being a child, long before her own children were ever dreamed of, having conversations with the moon. They were good conversations. The moon never rolled her eyes when Jasmine asked, Why? She wonders if the moon remembers her, 
She supposes it has barely had time to blink, though it's been almost a lifetime for her. The silvery tug encourages her onwards. After some careful thought, Jasmine steps down off the pier and onto the path of light that leads across the water to the rising moon standing on the shining surface. She's only a little bit surprised to find it solid under her feet. Jasmine grins and her face feels radiant, as if her skull contains its own echo of the moon at the end of the shining path. Delight makes her giddy. She takes a careful, wondering step forward. The path holds, steady underneath her feet. She keeps walking, confidence growing as she follows the trail of silver-gold light towards the rising moon. She wonders what will happen when the moon rises out of the ocean. Where does the path lead then? Will it stop underneath the moon? Will there be a ladder? Jasmine is determined to follow it and find out. She likes this feeling of following her own curiosity instead of tending to other people's questions. It's bubbly and it makes her want to dance, but she doesn't dance yet. The dark water lapping either side of the path looks deep. She wonders what lives in those dark waters, moonlight filtering down into the depths. Jasmine is still wondering when the moon goes behind a cloud. The path disappears. Abruptly, Jasmine finds herself sinking in the salty water. It's in her mouth and in her nose and her clothes and shoes are dragging at her. She's just had time to be glad she's not wearing a coat before the water closes over her head. It's as deep as it looked. She can't find the bottom to push against. She struggles to the surface and gasps for air. She can only just see the lights of the town along the beach on the horizon, pinpricks in the distance. Floundering in the dark water, Jasmine makes a decision. She kicks off her shoes, turns away from the shore and starts to swim. Forward, not back. Never backwards again. It's cold, but moving warms her a little. Slow breaststroke, feet kicking froth behind her. She can't be moving very fast, but it feels good to be here in the salty darkness, going forwards. She doesn't know how long she's been swimming when the moon reappears, and there's the path, looking for all the world like it had never left. Jasmine pulls herself, waterlogged and bedraggled, back onto the shifting silver-gold surface. She sits for a time, wringing out her clothes as best she can, getting her breath back. She runs her fingers through her hair, silver like the moon, twisting it to get the water out. Three silvery fish leap up, out of the water and over the path in an arc. Jasmine forgets her damp discomfort and laughs. She stands up, and under her bare feet the path feels alive and warm. Jasmine finds herself unravelling. The echoes of all those coats roles she's leaving behind, the duty and obligation, the wounds from caring so much for so many for so long. She becomes lighter and lighter, floating with the moon as it lifts from the sea and into the darkening sky. So that's what happens when the moon leaves the water. I become light enough to follow the path through the air. This time she does dance, spinning in the warm night breeze, salty-skinned and wild-haired, the moon getting larger and larger the further she dances towards it, until there it is, the end of the path, where a gate is waiting. Standing at the gate, like a guardian, is a large silver rabbit, taller than she is, with intelligent eyes, the impossible blue of high mountain lakes. The rabbit leans forwards, and its whiskers tickle the side of her face. It tells her that in order to pass through the gate, she must answer a riddle. Jasmine thinks about the rabbit's riddle for a while. It's another coat, the need to know things, the need to be right. She turns to the rabbit and says simply, I don't know. The rabbit twitches its whiskers, which feels like a smile and inclines its head in a bow. With one furry paw, it opens the gate and steps aside to let her pass through. Inside the gate is a garden. Beds of iridescent flowers grow softly, casting shifting shadows onto a sweeping lawn of fine grass leading down to a bench that looks to be carved from a single piece of wood. It's placed to have a view of the earth rising into the sky. Sitting on the bench is a woman. 
The woman turns to greet her, and Jasmine sees that the woman is also glowing, faintly. She looks youthful and ancient and familiar. Jasmine feels a spark of recognition igniting in her all the way back to her childhood self, standing on the shore telling secrets to the moon. The woman is the moon, herself. The moon within the moon, and she's gesturing for Jasmine to sit beside her on the carved wooden bench. It feels like no time has passed at all. Jasmine is a child again, asking impossible questions, and the moon is smiling as she listens. Jasmine tells the moon that she's afraid. Who is she without all these coats? The lightness is wonderful, and at the same time, the spaciousness sometimes feels too broad for one woman to fill. What does she fill it with? Where does she put her capacity for caring? Where does she put all her love? What happens now? And then... What happens after? What happens after she's gone? The moon doesn't answer her questions in words, but Jasmine feels herself filled with a different kind of knowing. An abiding sense of peace feels herself unfurling like a plant that's needed water for a long time as it finally feels the rain. Jasmine and the moon watch the earth travel across the sky. It looks like a marble rolling across the heavens. When the earth marble gets almost to the edge of the sky, Jasmine takes her leave of the moon. She says goodbye to the large silver rabbit at the gate and walks slowly along the silver gold path, stepping up onto the pier. She walks barefoot through the quiet streets and opens her front door as the new day is dawning, feeling silvery and different, lighter without the echoes of all those coats still clinging to her skin. Inside, the door to the spare room is open. The swelling tide of coats is nowhere to be seen. Jasmine feels ready, although for what she doesn't know. She thinks of her answer to the rabbit's riddle and realises that perhaps she never needs to know again. She can live her life like the moon, waxing and waning and following her own delight moment to moonlit moment. On clear nights, when the moon is approaching fullness, sometimes Jasmine walks down to the pier and steps carefully down onto the silver-gold moon path, dancing along it to the garden, where she bows to the rabbit at the gate, telling her secrets to the moon, while together they sit and watch the earth roll across the sky like a shimmering blue-green marble. Thanks for listening. I hope that you enjoyed this story. If you did and you want more stories, perhaps you'd like to become a patron. There are many waiting for you there on the site already and a new one is added each month. You can find out more about how that works and what's included on patreon.com forward slash can I tell you a story. P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash can I tell you a story. Until next time, I hope you find your way along the moon path and something delightful is waiting there for you. Thank you.